I want you to meet a man who made national news also as a teenager, once described by prosecutors as a cowardly killer, that's what they said he was, a spoiled rich kid who wanted to kill his parents for their fortune, Marty Tankliffe denies that even though he did confess to the murders, like Michael Crow, he says his confession at the time was false and that it was coerced by the police. And here's some background on Marty's story. Here are the facts that Marty Tankliffe and the Suffolk County Police Department agree on. On September 7th, 1988, at 614 in the morning, Marty Tankliffe calls 911. Within minutes, police arrive at the Tankliffe home. Moments later, paramedics discover Marty's father, Seymour, on the floor in his office, unconscious and bleeding profusely from a stab wound to his neck. He is rushed to the hospital in a coma. Marty's mother, Arlene, is found dead in the bedroom, nearly decapitated, her throat slashed. Marty tells police he thinks his father's business partner, Jerry Stuerman, is behind the attacks. He said Stuerman owed his father hundreds of thousands of dollars and was the last to leave a card game at the Tankliffe home the previous night. But here's where Marty and the police stories begin to differ. Lead detective James McCready noted Marty was oddly unemotional when police arrived on the scene. I think he would have been crying. I think he would have been shaken, been very upset. He's sitting there with his legs crossed and his hands folded over his knees. Uh, it, it struck me odd that he would be uh, so calm and didn't appear to be uh, upset. But Marty says he was unemotional because he was in shock. When he's brought in for questioning, Marty believes he's helping the police piece together the murder. What he doesn't realize is that he is their prime suspect. For several hours, Marty denies any involvement in the attacks. So police try a different tactic. When I saw her, I wasn't getting anywhere with the questioning. I came up with an idea. I tricked him. Yes, I did. I made believe that an officer at the hospital called. They had pumped his father full of adrenaline, that he had come out of his coma, and that he had said, Marty, you did it. That's when Marty's story suddenly changes, sealing his fate. Well, not only did his story change, 17-year-old Marty actually confessed to murdering his parents. During his interrogation, police say Marty told them he used a barbell and a kitchen knife to commit the crime, and even asked for psychiatric help because he thought he might be possessed. Police and prosecutors were certain they had their man, but Marty never signed that confession. So as a result of his confession, coerced or not, Marty was charged with double murder, facing a possible life sentence in prison. He went to trial, he took the stand. Did you kill your mother? No, I didn't. Did you kill your father? No, I loved my parents. I had nothing to do with this. In court, Marty insists his confession was a result of being tricked by detectives. Because they were saying, my father said I did this. My father never lied to me. They had me believing that I did it. And that's what they wanted to hear. As they build their case against Marty, prosecutors describe tension in the Tankliff home. Marty and his parents argued about chores and plans for his future. They also paint him as a greedy teenager, unhappy with the Lincoln his parents had given him, and desperate to inherit their fortune. Yes, he said if my parents were killed, I could have any car I want. But Marty's defense counteracts with witnesses of their own. Did he ever complain about his parents? No, he didn't. Did he ever complain about his car? No, he didn't. Ever complain about his boat? No, he didn't. After nine weeks in court, the jury revealed their verdict. How do you find, as the defendant, Martin Tankliff, as to count two, murder, second degree? Guilty. Yeah. How do you find, as the defendant, Martin Tankliff, as to count three, murder, second degree? Guilty. Marty Tankliff was sentenced to 50 years to life for the murders of his parents after waging a 17-year battle from prison to prove that he was innocent. He was finally freed this past December and just three months ago, all charges against Marty were dropped. Please welcome Marty Tankliff. Thank you.
I got to tell you, when I'm looking at your face, when the verdict is being read, uh, it made me feel a little choked up. What do you feel when you see that? I don't ever like looking at that video because mm -hmm. it's hard to imagine that it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, all I ever remember about it is hearing my family scream in the background and knowing I never knew when I'd see them as a free man again. Mm -hmm. What kept you fighting? Uh, my family. Yeah. Uh, I knew I was innocent. My mm -hmm. family is with me today. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother's sisters, my father's brother have been with me ever since. Mm -hmm. Um, there wasn't a day that I didn't wake up in prison knowing that they were there for me. Mm. Um, you know, and you pray that you have a family like I did because that's what got me through it every day. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you don't like looking at yourself there and don't like uh, going through all of this, but we're on television and I'd like you to uh, bear with us. Sure. So you went to your mother's funeral um, after she'd been murdered and went to your mother's funeral in shackles. In shackles, yes. Yeah. What do you remember? Because your video, your interrogation was not videotaped. Correct. Okay. It was a hostile environment. I remember that, you know, I kept saying it wasn't me, it wasn't me, and they kept saying, we don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, just tell us what we want to hear. We want to know it's you. Mm -hmm. And you get to a point where you start doubting yourself. Mm -hmm. You get to the point where you just want to escape that environment. Mm -hmm. And you know you're not telling them the truth, but you just want it to end. Yeah. How long do you recall it going on? Hours. Hours. Um, I couldn't tell you. I remember being brought into the police station when it was light outside and leaving when it was dark. Now, when you were first brought into the police station, did you know that you were their prime suspect? No. Yeah. Um, all they kept asking me was about my father's business partner, Jerry Sturman, uh, any problems my parents had with mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. uh, my background, my family, and that's what I thought I was there for. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened when you woke mm -hmm. up that morning. Um, I woke up, it was supposed to be my first day of school, mm -hmm. um, and I found my parents in the as condition. As a senior. As, as a, a senior, senior. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I just turned 17 on August 29th, mm -hmm. and it should have been a great year. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, it changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. So when you discovered your father, he was still alive? He was still alive. Yeah. Uh, I called 911. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to follow the instructions as best as I could. Mm -hmm. And after I found my father, um, I went looking for my mother. Mm -hmm. And found her? Yeah. Yeah. And so was there a point during the interrogation when you started to believe or think maybe, I, maybe you did do it? You know, I was always brought up to trust law enforcement. I was brought up that cops don't lie. Mm. Uh, my father was the police commissioner of Beltaire. Um, you know, we lived in a very good neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when the cops turned around and said, your father said you did it, I started to doubt myself. Because mm -hmm. um, I knew my father would never lie to me. I mean, I knew in my heart and my soul I wasn't responsible for this. When the cops start telling you, we know you did it and your father said you did it, you start to doubt yourself. Okay. So what did you then do? Did you decide, I'm going to make up the story? Or did you think, well, maybe I did? Or Basically, what ended up happening was I offered to take a polygraph. They refused to give me one. You, want, you asked for a polygraph? I asked for a polygraph right away because I said, I, I'm not guilty of anything. I didn't do anything. And they never gave me a polygraph. But as the interrogation went along, every time I denied knowing something or identifying anything, they would feed me facts. Mm -hmm. uh, Marty, we know you used this knife. Marty, we know you did this. And I would say, no, I didn't. And they said, just tell us that you did so this can end. And so by the end, you, had, you finally said, I did. Yes. What made you say, I did it? I just wanted to end. So even though, how soon after you confessed, mm -hmm. did you then uh, wait to the trial to then say it didn't happen? Immediately, that day. That uh, day. The minute I got out of the confines of law enforcement, mm -hmm. I basically said, they made me say it. So it was literally that night. Uh-huh, that night. That night. Uh-huh. And so your family believed you? Yeah. They, they've been by me every step of the way. So what did you think, family, when you had heard that first he did confess and then later he said he didn't do it? I, I think the, the, what happened that day was that the police, had, this, this whole thing had started bad because the police were lying to us for almost six hours. They kept telling us that Marty was coming. And so they were lying to us while they hid him locked up in a room. Um, and we're interrogating him. So it, it, the whole thing smelled bad to begin with. Then we finally got a call from Marty, and he told us on that call, he said, I only said it because they made me say it. And we also knew about the partner. I mean, we were aware of the whole family situation. So there was no doubt in our mind from the beginning. Well, Marty and uh, his team of lawyers and investigators believe 
there's evidence that links Jerry Sturman, a former business partner, partner of Marty's father, to the crime, but authorities have never charged Sturman, nor have they ever considered him a suspect. Why? Well, there, there's been clear evidence that the lead detective in my case, McCready, um, was friends with Sturman. Hi, YouTubers. I'm excited to give you an update about our own YouTube channel. Now you can find new videos every day. They're the kind of videos that will make you look at life differently. They may even make you laugh a little bit. Subscribe to the OWN channel today, and we'll see you on YouTube.